So, let me just say good morning to a few people. Hi, Tibor. Hey. Oh. Let me just see here. Hi, Tibor. Haven't seen you since Manchester, September 2000 and before COVID. Hey, when we went out for that meal after the, uh, I did a speech for, was it core spreads slash trade nation, whatever it was. Hey, hope you're well. Where are you guys coming? Where are you guys in the world? Tell me where you are. I'd be quite curious. And then we'll get trading. I got someone from Iceland. I think Iceland is on the green zone in many in many places so we can all come and uh, I've been to Iceland by the way. What a fantastic place. Um I went and and uh and swam in those warm uh those rock pools that you have. That was an out of the world experience. Um we got Mexico. I haven't been to Mexico. Um but I would love to go if you tell me it's safe to go. Where else are you from? Uh, Helsinki. Love to go to Finland. So I guess you have really, really long, bright nights at the moment, don't you? Theo wants me to donate 500 so he can start trading. Sure, I'll donate you 500 if I get to choose the currency. I'm going to go with 500 Zimbabwe dollar. Good luck. Uh, who else? What else have we got here? We got India, London. London is not quite as exotic as India and Mexico. Um, Oman. Disaster X is from Oman. Hey, how are you doing? It's good to have you here. We got South Africa. We got Paris, Denmark. Ugh. Not really special from Denmark, are you? Cape Town, now ah, there we go. I visited Cape Town, I went to see Robin Island, and on my way back from Robin Island, the ferry, there was a, a, a herd of dolphins that was migrating in a different direction. I've never seen anything like it, except on a David Attenborough show. We got Italy. So uh, we got a, a fair representation. We got Singapore, Syria. By the way, I want to apologize something uh, to my Muslim friends. It would seem that during the Ramadan, I was quite keen on posting pictures of big juicy burgers and desserts. And I think in retrospect, I wasn't being entirely supportive of you. <laughs> Although I was probably trying to tease you a little bit. Maybe I was just testing you. But I still, I want to apologize. Maybe next year I won't be quite as... Uh, Prolific in my burger posting. We got Poland. And it's good to have you all here. Sri Lanka. Mongolia. Now that takes the prize. Hello, Gantulga from Mongolia. You take... I think you take today's prize. We got Tehran. Mumbai. Sweden. Wow. Wow. So I, I know, I'm just, I'm curious where you guys are from. Russia. Hello, Russia. Tanzania. Lots of Denmark. Jamaica. I have been to, uh, I have actually been to India, would you believe it? Um, in, a, in a time gone by, I was very interested in Sai Baba. And I went to Puttaparthi and I stayed in his ashram for a month around the millennium. It was very interesting. Yeah. I have a funny story or two about Shai Baba, but I'm not sure I want to do that on YouTube because I may get the secret police of India on my neck. Yes. All right, David Brighton, shout out from Australia, Portugal. Eru. <laughs> Yen. <laughs> Sorry, Yen, but that's kind of funny because Eru is a beautiful place, but it's just kind of in the context of 
Jamaica, Mexico, Cape Town, Ero. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Yeah, as uh, Adrian is saying, sometimes we Danes, we get into trouble for our sense of humor or our distinct lack of sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Infamous for bad sense of humor. Right. <clears throat> Tell me something. Now, this is over to you. All right, are you ready? I got about 20 odd minutes. I will pick one, maybe two topics. I will obviously keep an eye on the, on the market. Tell me, what would you like me to talk about? Do you want me to talk about adding to positions? Do you want me to talk about stop losses? What would you like me to talk about? <clears throat> okay, so you get, I may not pick your topic, but just I'll give you a minute and then I will, uh, I'll pick a topic. Okay, in the meantime, I'm just going to go over to look at the, so we'll pick a topic in a minute. I brought up the gold chart here because I thought we not, we, we should really start trading gold. Looks very interesting. Here's the FTSE trade on a five minute chart that we did earlier today. We bought about here, there. That was a good trade. We did well. I think we bought about there. That was our entry <clears throat> and our exit was, or my exit was here. And the reason for my exit was the two chops here. Right, let's pick a topic. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look. There are some good topics.
Some very good questions. Okay. Right. I think I'm going to answer a few questions. There's a gentleman here who is asking me, uh, why are you more into FTSE than, for example, DAX? Okay. Why am I more interested in trading the FTSE than, say, the DAX? Uh, I'm not necessarily into one instrument more than another instrument. Not at all, but when you are looking at, say, the FTSE index, it's trading about half the size as the DAX index. And remember, we are CFD trading, so we are trading in dollars per point or pounds per point or whatever our currency is set up as. and. I find that the FTSE at times, if I show you yesterday, is easier to trade than the DAX. It's not always, but at times I feel that it is. Now, because the FTSE is trading at half the size, it means that I am able to double up on my trading size. So if I'm trading, say, 100 or 200 euros a point in the DAX, well, then I will do the double of that in the FTSE. Simply just because it would amount to the same. So then it becomes a question of, well, which index do you feel is easier to trade? Which one has got the more reliable signals? And I find that the DAX has got far more participation. And that participation will at time mean that there's a lot more false moves. So for example, if you look at the difference between the FTSE and the DAX this morning, how many people do you think have been wrong-footed by this move up, after which they also got wrong-footed on this way or this move down? And this is 75 points. It's about 70 odd points up, and then there's about 70, 80 points down. And it's not like you can say, well, there's a clear reason why the DAX should stop at 15,625. There's, there's no reason for that. Whilst in the FTSE, you can argue, I understand why the FTSE stopped where it did, because it's a clear double top. But you don't have the same transparency in the DAX. Oh, well, I'll give you some more information. You can see on a bigger timeline, why would the DAX stop there? And please don't say Fibonacci or 50%. It's just, I, I, I kind of go cold. Uh, but a bigger perspective of the FTSE. And I argue, well, that's because there's a lot more people that are trading the DAX. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So that was the, so, that, so that's the answer. It's, it's just, what do you resonate better with? Now, someone asked, how do you add to winning trades? And that's a really good question. I want to show you a trade over here on this account where I have my longer term stuff. This is a good example of a way to add to a winning trade. You start down here, hopefully you can see that. I'm buying the DAX here at 15,016. Now, if I go over on another chart picture, and 
I just tidy this up. Just one second, it's just gonna So the first trade was executed on the nineteenth of May at fifteen twenty. Okay. So if we go to this particular day, the nineteenth of May, fifteen twenty, that's about Here. So why would I buy down there? Well, if you know your technical analysis, and I'm sure you do, you say, well, down in this area here, there was support. So the question you always have to be mindful of is, am I honoring this support here? Or should I use this as support down here? Well, some technical analysis books would say that you need to honor this. What I was keen on is saying, well, it didn't last very long. It was just a quick down and then quick back up again. Now, what made me buy right there? If we go to a different time frame, say a five minute chart, And we go back to the 19th. It's just going to take me a little while to get there, I think. Nearly there. Here's the, here's the formation that I saw at this point in time. Oh, did I just screw? Sorry, guys. I think I just made a bit of a boo boo. Whoa, it's taking its time. I'll get there. I think it's a really important lesson for you to have. Guys are probably sick of me scrolling now. So the trade was executed there. This bar here. right there and if I'm not mistaken this was also a call in the live telegram group so what made me buy there well I have a a breakdown on this bar here I then have a trading range with inside bar and an inside inside bar that then breaks down again we then have an inside bar we have a a new low which closes halfway 
But the real decider, or the one that makes me go, right, I think this is it, is this bar here. You make a very dramatic low. This bar here is significantly longer than the prior bars, and it's probably also longer than this bar here and this bar here, but it closes right at its top. So I thought to myself that this low here had met support that I had seen uh, on the 30 minute chart. And we bought here. And by the time that the DAX actually comes up here, I can already move my stop loss up to break even. So now I got a comfortable winner that has a good 150 points in profit. The next time I add to this winning trade, two days later, at eight o'clock in the morning. You see that here? 8.06. So let's see what that looks like on the chart. Maybe I should do this on a 10 minute chart so we don't have quite so many. Yeah, that's probably a better way of doing it. So the next entry comes over here on the 21st. Right, let me go to a 15 minute chart. The next entry comes here. And there I actually add aggressively three times at eight o'clock and nine o'clock and nine o'clock. And I'm essentially free folding the position from a hundred to 200, 300, 400. That all takes place here. So at this point, I have the profit from 15,000 to 15,400 as a buffer. On the daily chart, it would look like this. Let me just get rid of that because that's confusing. So we bought down here. We have a very positive day the day after. And on the 21st, the moment we start trading above the high of the prior day, which was a very positive day, I am now adding to the position very aggressively, thinking that at the very least we need to get up here and test the highs. This is nothing but simple pattern recognition. Okay. And then finally, let me just quickly check what's going on in the FTSE here. FTSE has lost a lot of ground. And then finally I'm adding, let's get the big picture again.
on the 24th. at 8 o'clock in the morning. So that's right there. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. This is an example of a swing trade where you add to your winner. The initial entry, let the market prove that it wants to go in your direction. You get the shakeout here. This is the area where, hey, you want to be long? You got to ride this bull. Has a very dramatic counter move, which then completely gets uh, sucked up by the market. Supply gets sucked up. Adding to the position quite aggressively because we're coming in from a trading range after a bull trend. So the odds are high that we're going to see continuation. That position there is now in profit as well. So now you add more here. So you have the initial stake is 100%. In this case, I added 300% and then 100%. And then the last add is the one that is currently losing me. It's here. It was added on the 1st of June. Come on, chart package. The 1st of June at was at uh, 9.46, so it was here. That's it. First entry. Second entry, third entry, fourth entry. And that's it. That's an example of how to add. It's, it's, I, I don't have a, I don't have an algorithm that says add every 10 points or add every X amount of arbitrary points. On the contrary, I will gauge the position. Now I know, for example, from my studies that the, the turtle traders who deployed the trend following uh, mentality would have a very regimented way of adding. And I think that's probably because they had to be taught this. They came in as trade as individuals off the street and they possessed a skill set that the people that hired them uh, Richard Dennis and William Eckhart felt was conducive to the right kind of trading mentality, but they weren't necessarily traders. And so they had to be taught something which was very mechanical and very regimented. Now, I, I would probably benefit from having a strategy like that myself, but I actually prefer to gauge the market at the end of the day saying, well, do I think that this price action today is going to bring in buyers or sellers tomorrow? So therefore, my adding strategy is not uh, is, is 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 different than to say a a very regimented and mechanical approach to it. But what you saw here was a a swing trading approach when it comes to adding to positions. But the and and you have to obviously be mindful that if the the second position, if the market had gone against me, the the market would have very quickly sucked up my profit. It would have been gone. And you, you know, it it it's it's very easy to talk flattering about adding to positions because it uh, um, 
it it goes contrary to what the majority of people engaged with trading from a retail point of view like to do. They wouldn't like to add to the position, they would rather take profits off their position, you know, halving their position, quartering their position. And as, as such, you can stand here with a little, uh, little halo going, well, I'm doing the opposite. But with the opposite, there's a very distinct flip side. And that distinct flip side was something that anyone who has been a member of the Telegram channel last year will know. And the and that is the amount of times that I would go into a position which would have a good entry point, the market would move in my favor, and I would then add to the position, at which point the market would then uh, flip side. And it was almost always V reversals. And I would almost always be short on the way down. Market would add to my prof my, 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 my loop, my profit significantly. And I would be thinking, this is it. This is the big move down. And I would add to the winning position, after which I would see the market pew, do a V reversal back up and my profits would be gone at best. At worst, my first entry would be stopped out at break even and my second entry would be stopped out at a loss. And the whole reason for me posting uh, what I did this morning was that you may you, you may think that what I do is really easy. And by that, I don't mean trading, but, but running a, a telegram group with nearly 10,000 people. But it really isn't. Yeah, and the mechanics of it is, is easy. But the amount of questions that I get every single day are overwhelming. And I try to answer them, but I'm at that point where I can't. And, and that, that kind of makes me sad because I feel like I'm not giving uh, people the attention that they perhaps deserve since they are paying attention to me. But there is another unintended consequence of having grown the room. Presumably the room is growing because what is taking place here are, it represents something that you don't really find anywhere else. And that is that someone's actually you know, prepared to show you live what he's doing. But I also as an as an, a consequence of the room growing, I also get a lot of people asking me, why aren't you short the market is falling or why are you not buying the footsies going up? And as I, I just posted two very simple examples there, or, or even worse, why did you take profits in the Dow? Look, we could have gotten out at 25 points better now. And it's it's sad to say, but I'm only human. And I constantly have to weigh that, well, I really like to make money for myself and I do need to hear the cash register ring at some point. I think that I'm good at letting my profits run, but I also know that there is a difference between day trading and swing trading. And the distinct difference between the two is the amount of time that you will afford a position to move against you before you cut it. And I am far less patient with my trades in today than I am with my swing trades. So why don't we just do swing trading all the time? Well, we do swing trading all the time as well. It's just that very often I will close a position for you, but not for myself. And you may say, well, isn't that a bit stupid? Well, not really, because I think my risk appetite is significantly higher than your risk appetite. And I also feel that part of having a live trading environment, this is also to nurture the confidence that you will have in yourself. And I'm not sure that you, the majority of you are at that point where you would be able to withstand the pressure of having 70% losers and only 30% winners. You may ask yourself this, do you think that you would have thrived in a turtle trading environment where for every 100 trades that you executed, you may only get rewarded on 10% of them? See, I think, and it was actually one of the founders of the trading trade experiment, William Eckert, that said the vast majority of people try to optimize the amount of winning trades they have rather than trying to optimize the amount of money they make on an individual trade. Now, I'm going to say that again 
because I think it's important. William Eckhart, the very founder of the turtle trading experiment together with Richard Dennis said, the vast majority of traders try to optimize the amount of winning trades they have rather than trying to optimize the amount they are making on an individual trade. So I will often hold positions over the weekend and I'm not sure that I would want to take on the collective responsibility of 10,000 retail traders holding a position over the weekend, not knowing what would happen on a Sunday night slash Monday morning, not knowing if I was the one that just was responsible of 8,000 retail traders blowing their accounts because a suitcase bomb had gone off in New York and the market was limit down. For example, yeah, I hope you understand that, that it's a very fine balance between portraying the right kind of trading behavior, but also being mindful of the responsibility that I as an individual have to you. I think Roberto, uh, I think Roberto who asked a question, but the question is why close the position and not put the stop loss in there and let it be? Well, Roberto, I'm not stopping you from doing that, but I also have to balance that desire, ego, the desire to actually have a profitable room. And if I said to you, hey, I got a room where you can be part of, he will only win about five times out of a hundred, but when he wins, he wins big. Do you think you could sit through that? Only you can answer that. But I can answer. The vast majority would be left by the wayside. And they couldn't do that. Someone has asked me, why do I not trade with stop loss? Well, A, because my account is big, so I can afford it. B, I feel that I should gauge the market on what I'm seeing rather than having a stop loss. Now, I almost always have a, what I call a disaster stop loss, a stop loss that is far away in case some real bad behavior does happen. Listen, I just need to pause for a second. Excuse me.
Okay, I'm back. So we were talking about stop losses, and I prefer not to necessarily trade with stop losses. It's just, look, I've read the books, I've studied the material, I've attended the courses. I know, I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to trade with a stop loss. And if I am trading with a, say, I'm doing a big position in Dow intraday or NASDAQ, I will have a stop loss. But if I am swing trading and I'm starting off with a, what I would call my, my first entry, I wouldn't necessarily have a stop loss there. And that's just my philosophy. You certainly shouldn't share that philosophy. Well, can I always use a beer in Hungary? Let me just uh, go through if there's any. <laughs> I think I think Stuart O'Brien is. Uh, I have to be careful what I say. It's a valid point. Okay, I'm gonna stop streaming now. I've streamed a little longer than I wanted to today. Apologies that I had to just pause for a second. I hope that you got something out of me going through the swing trade. What I really wanted to do today was to take you through an example of a day trade uh, where you're adding two positions. And I think what I would like to do in the very, very near future, I'd like to go through the characteristics. There's five characteristics on how trend days set themselves up. And I would like to go through those with you. Can't promise you it will be this week, but uh, I can promise you that I will do it. All right. You take care of yourself. I'll see you soon. We'll see you for the US session. Bye-bye.